couple weeks ago, we got another one of these big updates for New World. These happen on a fairly regular basis, uh, about once a month. And in this particular one, it was revealed that there are some brand new endgame features coming to the game, including these five player instance dungeons that they call expeditions, a high level zone, ebb and scale reach, this outpost rush, which is a 20 versus 20 PVP, what appears to be battleground. And we got a release date, which this makes the third or fourth, <laughs> fourth, I think it's the fourth release date, technically. Uh, th this one's gonna happen. I I'm pretty sure. There was an article that was posted which gave a little blurb detailing each one of these new features and I'm going to be covering that. But also over on their press kit site, I noticed that there were se actually several minutes of B-roll footage showing off that new five player dungeon experience. And there's some pretty neat stuff in here that I want to show you and talk about. And then there's just the fact that this is like yet another update pushing New World more and more into like the traditional MMO feature feature set with the addition of these instance five player dungeons, which originally they had no intention of including in the game. And also what appears to be these PVP battlegrounds in this 20 vs 20 outpost rush mode, which I personally believe to be a direct response to what is a rather restrictive nature in their current faction war system, which I'll talk more about a little later on. So yeah, let's go ahead and dive into and check out all of this new stuff that's coming into new world. But first, everyone favorite part of a YouTube video the sponsor. <laughs> Today's video is sponsored by Blade and Soul Revolution. This is a martial arts open world RPG that was actually first introduced seven years ago on the PC as Blade and Soul. Well, you can now play the game on a mobile device. Some of the game features include a vast open world with the unique travel method of wind walking. There are five classes to choose from at the start, each with over 30 unique skills and attacks. There's some co-op gameplay features, including the ability to join in with your friends and create powerful joint attacks. There's the Faction Wars game mode where up to 500 players per server clash in a struggle for power. An epic storyline with the past eight years of story content on PC now available in the palm of your hand. And the community gathering activity of coming together in villages to form groups or societies that work and grow together. If you're interested in checking out Blade and Soul Revolution, go ahead and use the link in the description below. So the first and I think biggest thing that I want to talk about is these new dungeons, what they're calling expedition Editions, and they describe this as these five player instanced adventures that take you to the darkest corners of Eternum. And of course you can expect difficult battles that will challenge your group, require skill coordination uh, in order to achieve victory. Now, as I mentioned, besides what they briefly showcased in the video that they published, as well as the article, heading on over to their press site, their creator kit or whatever they call it, there was actually several minutes of B-roll footage, which gave us some insight onto how these dungeons are gonna be uh, looking and functioning. So let's go through some of that footage here. We've got this one clip where players start off by entering the dungeon entrance. This particular one looks to be in the side of like a cave or a mountain or whatever. It reminds me a lot of the Dark Souls boss fog before you have a boss encounter, that foggy wall that you have to walk through. You also notice this little rune above the entrance. I'm curious if that'll be above every dungeon entra entrance. And then after the entry scene, we see several scene setting shots. This dungeon looks to be like a temple dedicated to the ancients, one of those mysterious factions. These kind of ancient themed runes are actually found all throughout the game in every zone and will have a variety of enemies in them. This particular one looks to be filled with zombies and geist. There's a pretty brief clip of the party fighting a group of these types of enemies. And then you see them come across this sealed gate, which needs an Azoth st staff to unlock. Past the gate, we also see the mining of this specialty ore. And then right after that, we see the party completing a series of tasks. There's a shot of them interacting with this shrine. Then we see uh, party members stepping onto these pressure plates that look to require multiple people. And then eventually, once those plates were activated, it summoned up this bridge and an abomination for that they had to kill in order to acquire this candle. And then we see them placing that candle on a shrine and eventually also translating some scripts that they found at this stone. So it looks like the dungeons are gonna be more than just walk into the dungeon 
kill some enemies, fight a boss, collect your loot. There will be other activities or puzzles for you to actually participate in. We also got a 30 second clip of a uh, encounter. I think, I don't think this is a full on boss fight. I actually believe it's just a fight with a, just an elite enemy. It's called the Star Excavation Ravager. And we'll notice that it's got several abilities that it can do. It has the ability to charge. It's got this melee slap and a ground slam. It can also puke all over the ground, which I'm assuming leaves a puddle that deals damage over time or something. Um, and you'll also notice in this clip, there are several shots from various perspectives of what looked to be a dedicated healer, a dedicated tank, as well as three damage dealers. So it looks like they're going for their traditional Holy Trinity group. But I'm curious if that is even going to be necessary. It's going to really depend on how easy it is to kite these bosses. I mean, this count encounter, the reason I think it's an elite fight and not an actual boss boss fight is with how easy they took it down. They were similarly leveled and they managed to kill it pretty quickly without seemingly too much issue. So hopefully actual boss encounters are a little more interesting than this particular engagement. But hey, we got to see a elite uh, a five player dungeon encounter in action. And overall, I'm pretty happy to see the inclusion of these uh, five player instance dungeons. I think that structured group PVE that isn't open world is a good thing. It lets them potentially build uh, more interesting encounters. Like a lot of the open world PVE that we saw in the preview event just ended up being either a Zerg fest or or just kiting those enemies. Like the high level corrupted breaches that we were grinding once we hit max level were actually easier than the corrupted breaches I did while leveling up simply with how many players were concentrated on those tasks. Like there'd be massive groups of players going around farming these max level corrupted breaches. You basically, your objective was just try to tag the enemy before it dies. That's how easy it was. So that being what was their structured group PVE clearly wasn't quite cutting it. So I think that them adding dungeons and dungeon bosses could potentially mean they add proper mechanics, various boss phases, and have the whole thing tuned for groups of five players. On top of that though, I also think that they can make this open world PVE and open world boss fights a little more interesting than it was in the preview events. You can make it so that the bosses scale based on the number of nearby players, or you can even make boss fights that punish too many players in an encounter. Uh, there's been various types of mechanics in MMOs over the years. Just off the top of my head, a simple example is uh, the more players around a boss, the more life it leeches, like an AOE life leech. So the higher the player count, the more self-healing the boss does, meaning you want to restrict that player count to actually going there. You know, things like there are things that you can do to make it so that open world boss fights aren't just bring more players and kite this thing easy peasy, you know? So hopefully they do that, but also just the fact that they're adding actual five player instance dungeons ideally means that they can tailor that content to that group size and then make those encounters hopefully more interesting than that clip of the B-roll uh, elite encounter that I showed you. Cause again, that looked pretty, <laughs> pretty darn simple, but the dungeons aren't the only thing that we learned about. We also learned about this new PVP mode called Outpost Rush. And I think this is actually probably gonna be akin to battlegrounds that you see in other MMOs. I'll tell you why in a second. So they describe this as 20 verse 20 battles set in a primordial river, river basin. They said they're going to be various types of strongholds that you're fighting for control of. And what this looks to be is an a, attacking team and a defending team, similar to how the faction wars play out, uh, the, the currently structured version of PvP in the game. There also, though, look to be some PvE elements mixed in. So in the clip that they showed, there was this attacking PvE creature that was helping the attacking team. And then also in some of the various screenshots uh, that they released, we noticed that they have these things that they're calling summoning stones and then also show this corrupted breach portals are somehow going to be tied into the outpost rush PVP mode. So obviously, for one, this is on a smaller scale than the faction wars. Faction wars are 50 versus 50. But I actually also expect these will be more frequent and easier to join. And, uh, and I also think there's a good chance they could be more like a traditional PVP battlegrounds where you can just like queue up or easily get into these things. And the reason I say that is because one of the biggest complaints with the faction war system was how difficult it was to even participate. So faction wars, are, you know, these 50 versus 50 attacking and defending for control of the territories in the game, they happened once a day and you had to be picked to actually participate. It wasn't ever something you could queue up for. There was a sign up sheet, but the leader of each of the factions uh, guilds had to select the roster 
register. So that means unless there was just not a lot of people signing up or unless you knew the attacking and defending teams and the players on them, there could be a chance that you like never got to do the faction wars because you just would never get invited. Like it re realistically, what are the odds you get into a 50 first 50 battle that happens once a day? Not particularly great unless you're just on a dead server with not a lot of people signing up. So because of that being the case, because of uh, there, there being like a difficulty in participating in the structured PVP that was the faction war system, I think there's a really good chance that them adding this mode is an answer to that, something that people can more easily join. I don't know if it's going to be a queue system, but I expect it's not going to be as restrictive as a list that you have to get handpicked to get into. At least I would hope that's not the case, but who, maybe that's what they go with. We don't know for sure yet. We're waiting on more details. Uh, and then the, the last big thing that they revealed was this brand new zone called Ebon Scale Reach. We don't have a lot of information on it. They're saying that it's filled with lush wetlands and towering cliffs. It's a new endgame zone. It centers around this exiled empress who's building up a corrupted fleet. What I do particularly like, though, from what we've seen is the theming. It's got this very clearly uh, Eastern inspired architecture. I like the vibe of this zone. So it's pretty cool to see new zones. New, the, great. That's great. We had a new endgame zone added in the last big update, which was cool as well. And then I guess the final thing that we should talk about is we now have a launch date. Uh, the fourth la <laughs> fourth launch date for this game. So first it was supposed to be last May, then that got pushed back to August, then that got pushed to spring of this year. Now they're saying this is the one, August 31st, 2021. I think it's gonna happen, trust me. Fool me four times. Please don't fool me four times. So August 31st, and, and they're saying that this delay is to add more features like all of the features that we just discussed, the new P, the new dungeons, the new PVP mode. Um, and then also just to focus on shipping a high quality polished experience. Prior to the launch, there is going to be a closed beta about a month earlier, uh, starting on July the 20th. They say this will be available to anyone who pre-orders the game. Here's my suggestion. If you want to see how this game is shaping up, pre-order the game, but make realize that you could refund it or make sure you can refund it before you pre-order the game. I don't advise in pre-orders in general. I'm totally towing the line there that with what a lot of people suggest. I don't think it's good for the industry. I don't think it's good for us as consumers, us players, but yeah, you could try you could pre-order the game, try the beta and then refund the pre-order if you don't like what you see. And not to shit on New World, I these people work hard to make this game. I get it, but look, like we we, we I'm more concerned about you guys not wasting your money on something if it doesn't turn out good. But I'm li I am liking what I'm seeing of New World, and I guess that's kind of the interesting thing that I wanted to touch on with this video. There's probably already tons of videos talking about this post because they revealed all this stuff like over two weeks ago at this point. But it's interesting to see them continuing to move less away from their origins of what was this survival open world PvP where you could loot people's corpses when they died, further away from that and closer and closer to to more of these traditional MMO features. We're getting instance dungeons, we're getting smaller scale PVP, and this is in, in conjunction with all of the other various changes that they've done in the months uh, since that preview event. We've gotten a pretty big update to combat. There was a lot of complaints ar around that, specifically the shared cooldowns. They removed the shared cooldowns, they've tuned up combat. In addition to that, they've added several new weapons, the spear, the great axe, and the rapier. Along with those weapons, of course, include brand and new skill lines that we have access to. So kind of like new classes, really. They've overhauled the crafting system, making a bunch of quality of life improvements to that. They've added a bunch of brand new PVE enemy types. They added a threat system for those PVE enemies. There are brand new elite enemy affixes, trying to make encounters with elites more interesting than just having more health and dealing more damage. There was the new zone of reek water, as well as the fishing trade skill that came to the game. They added PVP dueling. And there's a bunch more stuff like I've made a couple of videos since the preview events with these monthly updates of all this new stuff that they've been adding and yeah it's just the game is cha changing a lot a real lot a lot's been coming to this game and I suspect we're still going to be hearing more in the time between now and that beta that's taking place in July and obviously we're going to get more details they mentioned that at the end of their uh, blog post we'll be getting more details about these features that we're touching on here today in the coming months as well so a very 
very happy to see the inclusion of dungeons. I am curious on how elaborate they're going to be. Like, are we saying every dungeon will have one boss, three boss, five bosses? How many are we going to get? How much PvE uh, clearing will there be? Are there going to be many puzzles, things like that? And then also, what is forming a group and entering the dungeons like? Is there going to be a queue system like what WoW does? Or is it going to be um, former party and walk your asses there? I'm actually kind of hoping that's what it does end up being. Um, I just think it's better for world immersion and stuff. Not better for your your free time, but better for immersion. <laughs> and then hopefully beyond the dungeons, we also get more as well as more interesting open world PV activities, like I mentioned. And I have to say that I think th them adding more structured PVP modes is probably also a good thing. Touch. I've said this before. I think there should be like one zone in the game dedicated to open PVP. Have at least that taste for the people who liked what New World originally was. I have to say though, this continues to be one of the most promising new MMOs coming out this year, partially by virtue of it possibly being the only new MMO coming out this year. But memes aside, I do think it looks good. I think it's shaping up well, and I'm happy to see that they are continuing to improve it. I'm happy they're taking their time. Honestly, when they delayed it back last August and they said, they were coming out in spring my initial re reaction was guys take a year i think you need more than a few months and hey they're doing it so good if good good i don't think it's because of my advice i hope not don't <laughs> but yeah they're doing it they're taking their time they're trying to polish this thing up this almost seems like a hail mary for amazon at this point because they've had such a spotty track record with the games that they've worked on and released and everything and unreleased most of them um so they're really clearly trying on this and i I hope it turns, for my sake, for wanting to play a good game, I hope it turns out well. So there you go. Um, that's all the newest information on New World. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will continue to keep an eye on this thing. I am very interested and hope it turns out good. But thank you for watching the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one, all right? Take it easy.